Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to discuss a very interesting situation coming out of China right now with the ever grande meltdown that's going on over $300 billion in bonds defaulting. We're going to talk about what that means for the real estate sector in China and around the world. They are calling this the Lehman Brothers of China is what's currently going on now. What's gonna happen, what we'll see, we're gonna talk about that all in today's episode. Additionally, we're gonna talk about the Atlanta Fed putting GDP rates 47% lower than anticipated. Is the crash coming? I don't know, could this be the thing? Let's dive into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Bridger Pennington. On this channel, we talk all things funds and finance, how to start funds, scale them. I've ran two investment funds myself, but today, we're actually gonna talk a little more macroeconomics with the current situation at Evergrande. Now, as some of you guys know, we also give $100 away for the top comment, best comment, funniest, whatever comment you got below the comment that I like the best. So you gotta comment and like below for $100. Today's winner from last video is from Super Mad Brothers. They say, what's with the floating shoe? This is the most capitalistic video I've ever seen, LOL. Perfect, okay, number one, the floating shoe is an award we give away to anybody in our group that raises over 10 million dollars for their fund. We've given away over a dozen of these shoes. It's awesome to be a part of. And number two, thank you. I love capitalism. I think capitalism is the lifeblood of America. And now there's people that try to demonize capitalism. Capitalism is the reason we have YouTube and phones and computers. Everything we have is from capitalism. It's beautiful. If you don't love capitalism, you probably want to go watch another channel <laughs> because capitalism is so freaking beautiful. So with that come, I don't know if he was being sarcastic or what, but super mad, mad brothers, you get $100. Send us a message at bridger at investmentfundseekers.com. We'll send you the $100 your way. If you want to be entered, comment and like this video below and subscribe and we will pick somebody. We do it every video. It's kind of fun. All right. Now back to the topic. So Ever Grande is out of China. They are a real estate behemoth out of China. And over the last two weeks, they've been notifying investors that they are going to default on over $305 billion of bonds, which is absolutely insane. Now, what is a bond? Okay. First off, in the most simplest terms, a bond is a loan to a company. So if you're an investor and you say, Hey, uh, Evergrande, we think you're a big company. We're going to give you a loan or we're going to buy your bond and we're going to give you a uh, million dollars. We're going to buy that bond. So the company takes, Evergrande takes your million dollars and then promises, hey, we're going to pay, I believe they pay a 6% dividend every year on the bond, a payment that they make. So you transact, you give them the million dollars. Now every year you're expecting a 6% back on that. Now typically you don't do this with just any old company because you don't know if they're gonna pay, but a huge company like Evergrande or Apple or Google, you know, you'd know, you say, well, Apple's a big company. I think I can trust that they can make payments. Yeah, let's do it. Evergrande is so big. They've created over $305 billion of these bonds, money that they've taken and they're promising to pay on every month. They gotta make a payment on that. Now additionally, these bonds that you buy, Yes, you can hold them. There's a, there's a time period on these bonds, but also you can trade them. That creates the bond markets. Now you can trade these bonds. The most famous bond market is the US treasury bond. You can give money to the US government and they will give you a, a note or a coupon saying that they will pay you on that note. So how does this play in? Well, Evergrande, back to the story, told investors that they no longer could make payments on their bonds, which means Evergrande is really becoming insolvent as a bond holder and as a company itself. Usually your bonds are the last thing you default on. There's lots of other things you can default on, but you don't want to default on bonds. So this is currently sending ripples through global markets, specifically the Chinese real estate market though, because Evergrande currently is building over 2 million homes in China. They've taken down payments on those homes. They've got people that are moving in or trying to build and construct. They can no longer transact and complete those projects. Additionally, they hold real estate holdings all over China. They are going to default on those payments as well. So think about the trickle down effect of this just in China. If they default on those construction projects, all the contractors around those construction projects are now out of a job. All the companies that were planning and getting more equipment and buying other stuff to build these 2 million homes. All the contractors, the construction companies, the workers on those properties are all now out of a job. Additionally, all of the investors of the $305 billion issued here, and this could be banks, I'm not sure who holds the bag here, apparently are not gonna get any money back. 
Now, at this point, what this could trigger is a few things, a few scenarios that I'm gonna walk through that they potentially will do to recover this. But right now, if you're an asset manager in the United States and you've put in, um, let's say, a billion dollars over here and you thought it was a safe place, you know, you were making 6% a year, this is great, this is a great place to be, you're now potentially gonna lose a billion dollars. That's your exposure. Hopefully it's not gonna happen because of one of these scenarios I'm gonna paint right here. Now, before we go into these, look at the ripple effects of this. We're in a pretty great economy, right? I, I, we mentioned out a video a few months ago about Arkago's Ar capital. They lost $20 billion in like three days in a good economy. It's not like we're in a, a bad, you know, this is, everyone's rich right now, right? Everything's high, everyone's making money. Why is this, is this potentially the first crack about what's going on in the actual down grassroots of the economy, what's going on is people have taken on way too much debt. It's a similar scenario that happens at every market cycle. People get greedy, they take too much debt, and because they take too much debt, they then default, like we're seeing right now, default on that debt and have to do a few things, which I'm gonna talk about right here. So the first scenario that I think is decently obvious, Evergrande is a real estate company. They hold a lot of real estate holdings. Number one is to fire sell those properties. You would think to deep back up their positions, they hold real estate. So they're gonna have to sell these properties. Now Evergrande is such a big player that they can't just go sell these overnight at a fair market value. These are most likely going to be sold at pretty steep discounts because they're so big they're such a big holder they're gonna have to sell these properties which will put the real estate market down in a supply demand curve now there's a huge amount of supply of properties coming to the market and i think a lot of banks and other places will probably scoop these up to give them liquidity to go and make payments on their debt obligations their bonds now second scenario similar to the first but they could have an actual corporate bailout now I don't know if this is even possible by, by the size of Evergrande. There is potential that another large bank or institution, a privately held business or, bank or an institution could come in and save them. You know, you think about a JP Morgan Chase or a huge, I mean, a huge ass, a BlackRock could come in and bail them out. And actually BlackRock might not be a bad person to come in and save these guys because they have loved buying up any real estate they can right now all over the world. They are fed backed and get a huge holding in China might not be a bad scenario. However, I don't think that's going to happen, which leads us to the third case scenario. We are in communist China. Now I mentioned communist China, but we did this in the United States. A government bailout is I think becoming more and more likely as the days get worse and worse. If you're following the story online, you see protests and I mean investors and it's just looking worse and worse for markets. I could see the Chinese government stepping in to help save and bail out Evergrande. However, the Chinese government has not said anything about doing a bailout, which leads me to my next point, which could be something that's happening right now. There's an incredible book called Disunited Nations by Peter Zahan. Now, Peter is a macro economist. He wrote another book called Accidental Superpower. These are very dense and thick books, but very insightful on what has happened in the past in economics and geography and his predictions for what is going forward just by the basis of economics and what he believes will happen. He uses a lot of data, a lot of science to back up his predictions. Now, one of the predictions he makes in Disunited Nations, which was written last year, was about the Chinese government. He states that currently Chinese companies have more debt on their balance sheet than any other group of companies on the planet. It's not, I think it's almost twofold higher than anyone else. And it's because they can get very cheap money from the Chinese government. Now, because China is a communist country, the Chinese government backs most of the large businesses inside of China and they will flush them with cash to get something off the ground. So I'm gonna use a metaphor here, but if there's the steel company of China, the Chinese government will back one group, one entrepreneur and say, this is the steel company of China. You're gonna produce all of the steel of China. Here is lots of money to go out and do it. So the Chinese steel company takes all the money, they go build a huge plant, hire tons of employees, and now they produce steel. The problem with that system, which I mentioned earlier about capitalism, is they have no reason to be efficient. When doing that, they just need to go build as many buildings as possible. It doesn't matter where they are. We need steel and we need it today. In a capitalist society, they would go create 20 steel companies, 20 entrepreneurs say, I'm going to do steel. They would all fight and battle against each other until 
one or two became the top most efficient. They could find the steel for the cheapest prices. They could pay employees the best. They had the best locations. They produce the best steel. And by factor, the market decides out of the 20 steel companies, this one or this these two steel companies produce the best steel. In China, there's just one company. There's one steel, whether it's good steel or bad steel, or they treat workers bad, who cares? Here's your steel. It's the only place you can buy it from. Now, again, it's a metaphor. Don't go crazy in the comments. That's a metaphor between communism and capitalism. So back to the comment here on China has more debt than any other nation. Every year, they also create more debt than any other country on the planet. And Peter Zan in his book points out that not only are businesses in China taking on more debt, 68% of that debt is used to pay off old debts. They are getting new debt to pay off interest payments on old debt, 68%. And in his book, he points out, this is not sustainable. You cannot continue to run a country when 68% of debt created and you're the most producing debt in the world of your businesses, they're not efficiently run to the most efficient possible because of the communist structure. And number two, you have 68% of that is going to old debt. So his prediction is that in a, and he didn't have a timeline, but down the road, the Chinese government would become insolvent because of this amount of debt that is burdened on Chinese businesses. So that brings us back to number three here on a government bailout. Is a government bailout even possible? Are they to a breaking point that China, the government says, well, we don't have enough money or we don't want to take that liability on to bail out Evergrande. So we will see what happens. Can China do it? The government, can they not? If they don't, they will, if this scenario doesn't work out, if this scenario works out, they are fire selling properties. It looks like a complete collapse of Evergrande. $305 billion from investors, institutions is going to be lost. Millions of jobs will be lost in China and it could lead to a tailspin effect of downward in their real estate sector. Over 23% of China's GDP comes from the real estate sector. This could be a very interesting scenario that plays out. Now this plays into the Atlanta Fed, which is not the main Fed, but one of the central banks that's in, inside of the Fed, they came out and published the US GDP statements. They put GDP over 45% lower than any other group or institution had predicted on GDP. Additionally, Wall Street analysts and groups alike have come out and said that they are looking for a major correction shortly. Now, does this play into the Evergrande situation? Does it come together? I'm not sure the t coming days will tell. We'll probably make another video on it, but it's a pretty interesting situation that's going on. Comment below your thoughts. I'd love to hear what you think about the situation, what potentially could happen, and we will see what goes on. Thank you guys so much. Like, subscribe below. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.